Morning, friends. Apart from traveling and digital nomading, I love talking about money. I think money is kind of taboo topic, and I think it's quite useful to talk about money, to talk about our spendings, our financial strategies. So today I want to share how much it costs to travel the world. We've been traveling with my wife for almost four years already. We're tracking all of our expenses, and I want to share with you today how much we pay for every category of the expenses and just share my thoughts on this topic in general. This video will be highly loaded with numbers, that's why I moved back to my apartment so I have a, my laptop in front of me so all the numbers would be correct. We started traveling in 2018. Uh, if you wanna you can check the video about my whole story, how I get to this point and how I've been learning programming, I will put it in the link below. I have uh, numbers for three exact years because 2018 was, wasn't a full year. I have numbers for 2019, 2020 and 2021, 2022 is still ongoing. Let's start with 2019, we were mostly traveling Southeast Asia, 2020 pandemic started, we stayed in in Bali for a long term so we only flew once to Philippines. Most of the numbers from 2020 they from Bali basically. If you haven't checked my cost of living in Bali video you can also do it. I will put the link in the description below. 2021 we started traveling again. We visited Turkey but mostly we spent here in Georgia. I also have cost of living in Georgia specifically in Belize, so you can check it out as well. So this video will be more like brief coverage on how much we spend on different categories while traveling the world and living as digital nomads. Let's start with the first category which is rent and utilities as well. But mostly we are renting Airbnb so utilities is usually included. It's usually the biggest category we spend money on. I think it's one of the biggest in any budget. On average we spend $6,503 per year which making it $541 per month on average. But I see that in 2019, for example, it was cheaper. I guess we were traveling more in, into the cheapest countries like Malaysia, Vietnam. But in 2020, it was much bigger because we lived in Bali and Bali accommodation are not cheap even after pandemic started. And here in 2021, in Georgia, it's much lower. And I also divided it by 30 days. So it's making it $18 per day on average on accommodation. Next category is Eat out. Eat out. We spent four thousand seven hundred forty-eight dollars on average per year, which making it three hundred ninety-five dollars per month or thirteen dollars per day. It's actually quite low number. It's lower than I expected, especially considering that there are two of us and we were eating out all the time. We often cook breakfast uh, but lunch and dinner we usually eat out but as I already mentioned on this channel several times we never order drinks that's what allow us to lower our bills in the cafes and restaurants. Here's a similar picture to accommodation actually. In Bali we spend around $5,700 per month and here in Georgia it's much lower $4,000 per year which making it again Bali expensive place even in terms of eating out not only in accommodation. Next one is travel. In travel we put everything like tickets, uh, all the visa fees, all the documents we need to do for traveling and it's a quite a huge number $3,389 per year or $282 per month, which makes it almost similar to the bill of eating out, which is insane. And here, as I can see, the biggest bill was on 2019, 4,800, and 2020 and 2021 was much, much lower because we didn't travel much because of the pandemic. Here's a little idea how much you probably need to travel everywhere. Next one is groceries. On average we spent $1,488 per year or $124 per month or $4 per day. But as I said before we almost all the time we were eating out so these groceries is mostly probably some maybe drinks, maybe some instant coffee, maybe something for a breakfast, stuff like this. And it's actually as I can see it's almost almost an average the same between all the years. Next one is the entertainment category. Here we track usually uh, movie tickets, concert tickets, uh, parties, 
or booze as well we put it in the entertainment category i don't know why but it was like this and as you can see it's similar to groceries actually 1406 dollars per year or 117 dollars per month here i can see the first year 2019 was much more party related i guess because we spent two thousand dollars in this year and both of the next year 2020 and 2021 is almost around one thousand dollars but i guess in 2019 we also visited uh, a few festivals in europe so it adds up as well next one is the transportation usually it's uh, some local public transport uh, renting a car or scooter and also taxis here we spent $1173 per year or 97 per day and only in this category Bali to in 2020 was the cheapest month because the renting of scooters there are really cheap and we basically were using scooter all the time but it's actually a pretty big category as well because i was expecting that we spending on the transportation less than 100 dollars per month next one is health we spent 693 dollars per year or 57 dollars per month i guess it's mostly insurances uh, to visit europe we need to book insurance massages in asia medication i had uh, my tooth uh, fixed ones in Bali so that kind of stuff as you can see the in 2019 we spent $1,000 and in 2021 we spent $250 on that it's really varies a lot and if you want to have your bills on insurance uh, pretty predictable you can check safety link i have a referral link in my description so you might as well check it out next one is different services i think it's mostly different subscriptions music on a different application netflix etc we spend 512 dollars per year or 42 dollars per month which i think it's totally fine 42 dollars for subscription is fine i know people who spend much much more dollars on this category but we're trying to keep it minimal and don't have too much subscriptions. Next one is uh, beauty, which is insanely low category for us. It's just $60 on average per year, which makes it $5 per month. I think it's small because Veronica mostly did the haircut herself and I just go the cheapest haircuts available in the city where we're traveling and I don't do haircuts every month and apart from that we don't spend any money on beauty services uh, whatsoever. And it was the last category and in total we have on average $19,975 or $1,664 per month or $55 per day. I think it's fairly good number. I guess it could be lower. I've seen some YouTube videos where people spend like $30 per day and we're traveling all the, around the world. But we don't really try to live on a really, really tight budget. We kind of relax in that sense. And I think this number is more or less good for us and we managed to save some money even after all these spendings and i see this number also went down every year i guess we were learning as well on the way how to save money and travel at the same time but i just wanted to point it out that it's not as expensive as many people think i guess it could be as expensive as you want but if you are on a budget so if you have $1,600 you can easily travel that's all the spendings here for a couple for me personally it's quite cheap there is also was one question about value for money I thought about this and it's hard to answer this question because it depends on the category because in some countries there's eating out really good for example in Bali it was really great also in Thailand but in some countries the accommodation is better etc i guess for me the best value for money were in malaysia thailand and vietnam these three countries they are popping up in my head when i'm thinking about value for money totally recommend checking them out if you haven't been there and one last thing i should mention you probably noticed there is like several categories that i didn't mention that people are usually have and we also have these unnecessary costs and i just want to share them as well but we could definitely cut them out if we wanted to so it's shopping on shopping we on average spend five thousand dollars per year but it's uh, basically several purchases of the laptops of the iphone 
of some stuff for work or Apple Watch or stuff like this, uh, they could happen like once or twice per year, but they're usually quite expensive and I usually quite prepare for them. I also have a category called business, which includes all the things I spend for my projects, like for YouTube or for my SaaS products, and it costs me on average $678 per year, which is quite low, but I also don't make much money on my businesses yet. I also spend some money on education, $848, but it was mostly bills for my university in 2019. I graduated in 2020 remotely from Bali, and also we spent $1,000 dollars last year on immigration it was mostly document preparation for our migration to Canada which isn't gonna happen this money were basically spent on nothing <laughs> they were thrown away because we were not moving to Canada and in total it makes it $27,400 per year, which is much, much higher as you can see. But as I said, these expenses could be easily cut out if we didn't have money for them. By the way, about immigration, I will soon have some news because we are still immigrating, but it's still in the processing, so I will let you know quite soon on Instagram or I will make a video about this. I hope you like this video, give me a thumbs up if you do. If you want to see much more like financial content or maybe a travel financial relationship, uh, please let me know what ideas you have. I would gladly to record another video about this. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my Instagram and see you in the next one. Bye bye.